Welcome, Nourish Leaders. Welcome, women that are filling their cup until it overflows. Welcome, sacred visionaries. Welcome, holy women. Attuning their lives even more to the cycles of the earth, the moon, their bodies. Where are you in your cycle? Once you join us, let us know in the comments below. I'm on day two of my cycle. And this song by Leah Free, there she is again. This is one of my go-to early period songs. I have been in the period cave, my loves. And I hope you too experience the bliss of the period cave when you start your cycle. It is a time of rest. And truly, this series, Embodied Leadership, must incorporate that time of rest. It is essential. It is vital. We are not meant to give, give, give 24-7. We are not machines. We are embodied leaders. And truly, the way we live from these bodies, from the inside out, carries our energetic leadership signature. What did you come here to embody? Is it hard for you to rest? Let this be the frequency of rest of tuning in word. This series, these classes, whether you're joining us live or in the replay Mondays at 10 a.m. Eastern time this season. Let it be a moment at the beginning of your week to drop in and set that intention. What am I here to embody this week? Who am I being called to lead? Who am I being called to serve? And what do I need to embody? What codes am I being called to embody this week, this day, to fulfill that leadership dharma, my purpose? which truly feels so blissful when we embody our purpose. For me, on day two of this cycle, I've been doing my microdosing protocol for a couple of weeks now. The theme has been pleasure. You've probably seen me talk about it a lot lately. Pleasure has been the code that I've been embodying and leading from. And today I'm really feeling a bit of a shift into embodying rest and relaxation. So who struggles with rest and relaxation? Perhaps you didn't see your mother resting relaxing actively or passively and it imprinted on you that a good woman truly never rests a good woman whether in her body her mind with her worry her heart she never finds rest she is always giving she is always outwardly pouring of this love and this energy of thinking and worrying and doing for everyone else. Maybe that imprinted on you. 
as it did on me. And I'm here to tell you, dear ones, we get to change that story. We get to break that cycle. And you are not selfish for resting. This is, it's work. It's work to go against every instinct and every model we've been shown. And the same goes for pleasure. The same goes for so many of the sacred feminine technologies that we are embodying here in Nourished Leaders. Truly, we can feel like that salmon swimming upstream sometimes. And yet we know deep, deep down in the marrow of our bones, this is not only our birthright to rest, to experience pleasure, to experience community, to experience nourishment, but it's truly our medicine. It's our medicine for the world. It's our leadership. So you're not alone if you find it difficult. And may some of these practices begin to metabolize in your system and weave their way into your fascia, into your brain, that neuroplasticity, into your DNA for future generations, just shifting the tides so that we all can float on the stream of rest. You are so worthy. Let's begin by dropping in, <laughs> taking a deep breath in, letting the eyes close, releasing that breath. Finding the support beneath you. Feeling the outline of your body here in space. Imagining you're sitting in a circle with thousands of other women doing the same work. You are not alone. Maybe just playing with lifting and spreading your toes, tapping them on Mama Earth. Taking a few sighs here, <sighs> settling into your body. <sighs> Beginning from the toes, drawing up from Mama Earth, the energy of rest, your own awareness you actively relax your feet while exploring the sensation from the inside out, the toes, in between the toes, the ball of the foot, the arch the inner blade, the outer blade, the heels, the Achilles, the ankles, the tops of the feet, both feet in their entirety, humming with aliveness, If it helps, you can imagine honey, golden, shimmering, drawing from the earth into your feet, inviting this energy of rest, relaxation, or even pleasure, if that's on your menu today. Feeling the honey between your toes, that delightful sensation 
As we continue to breathe, we draw the honey up through the calves, the skin on the outside of the shins, noticing the shin bone, the calf muscle, the entirety of the lower leg, filling with this awareness, this relaxation. So we draw it up through the knees, the kneecaps, the backs of the knees, balancing your awareness in both of your knees at the same time. Continuing to draw it up with another inhale into the thighs, the tops of the thighs, the sides of the thighs, the hamstrings, the backs of the thighs, deep inside of the thighs, to your femur, the entirety of both legs and both feet now shimmering and swirling with this energy of golden relaxation. Continuing up as we inhale and sigh it out. <sighs> the golden relaxation travels up into the hips, into your honey pot, into this sacred holy trinity of your pelvis, your womb space, your yoni, all of these could be physical or energetic. Breathing into this holy grail, your chalice, filling it with this golden liquid energy of your awareness shimmering, pooling here. slipping down into all parts of your groin, your pelvis, the sacrum, each hip flexor, the psoas, pooling into your belly button, the low back, shimmering and swirling here, truly healing any pain you may be experiencing. Really let it sink into your cells, to your cellular memory. Spending time here for if you are to have children, if you have ovaries, you contain already the seeds of your grandchildren. imagining them generations out thanking you for doing this work this work of changing your DNA of shifting your cellular memory of relaxing resting nourishing yourself for your future generations. Taking a deep inhale in, sighing it out. The golden honey continues to travel up the spine, up the back and around the shoulder blades, dripping off the scapula, bathing your shoulders, and the inner muscles and inner workings of the shoulders in this relaxing, pleasurable energy. Down the back it drips and into the chest, around the shoulders, down over the breasts, 
into your heart. This awareness travels into your heart, your precious heart, blooming open like a flower to receive this medicine, breathing it in, sighing it out, <sighs> really letting it in, breathing it in, sighing it out. <sighs> One more time, really breathing it in. Sighing it out. Any emotions that come, let them come. Make this a practice, letting the emotions come. Don't hold back, don't dam up the emotions, let them come. Whether it's anger, joy, frustration, grief, love, pleasure, relaxation, feel it fully so that it doesn't build up, so that you're not self-denying. Breathing this golden elixir down into all the organs of the belly, the side body, filling the entire upper body with this glowing, shimmering awareness. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, the golden elixir travels down your arms, the upper arms spiraling around through the elbows into the forearms, the skin of the arms, the muscles, the fascia, the bones and ligaments, the tendons, deep into the arms, down into the hands, the tops of the hands, the palms of the hands, in between your fingers, each finger, feeling your sensitive hands from the inside out, bringing a sense of rest, relaxation, and nourishment into the hands and the entire arms. Feeling your magic pulsing at the hands, these powerful hands, ready to help you do your purpose, your work in the world, but also acknowledging that rest is part of your purpose and so essential. You can let the hands rest while admiring their power. Taking a deep breath in. And as you sigh it out, the golden elixir travels back up the neck, the throat, bathing your vocal cords, your entire throat, the bones of the neck, skin outside the neck with this golden energy working up into your jaw the lower TMJ the upper TMJ all around the bones and the teeth into your mouth on your tongue back and down the throat filling the entire face now up into the cheekbones, the nose, the nasal cavity, the sinus passages, up into the eyes, swirling around your eyes, maybe bringing you visions, this beautiful swirling, golden, shimmering light, this liquid energy of rest and pleasure and nourishment traveling up into your third eye to your brain nourishing your entire brain bathing it in this honey liquid so you can soak up all this wisdom truly knowing you have everything you need 
Taking a deep breath in. Sighing it out. The golden honey shoots through the crown of your head and drips down around your crown, your scalp, into each hair follicle, bathing the entire head in this delicious energy of rest and relaxation, running down the face, down the ears, into the ears, until your entire body is covered and filled with this energy, this magic, this medicine. Just breathing here with this golden liquid medicine, allowing it to heal what needs healing, to find those sensations that need shifting and just to be, just to let your entire being be filled with awareness, with your own pulsating aliveness, this field, we do not know where it ends or begins, it's all a mystery beloved and you are part of the mystery. We are all part of the mystery. Relax into the mystery. Relax into what is unknown. What is unknowable. Surrender and trust. For you have been given this experience. Can you receive it? Can you simply let it in? Letting it in at a cellular level, receiving this contact nourishment Letting this medicine show you whatever it wants to show you. Take another deep breath in. And as you exhale, you can open your eyes. Take some blinks. Woo, my lids are heavy with this energy of relaxation. What a powerful powerful meditation and visualization and experience, embodied experience that was. Let's scrub our fascia together, scrubbing into the left palm, the flat bones of the hand. These are the mounds of the hand. We're going to scrub into these together. Hmm. How are we feeling, fam? Tell me in the comments. Let me know. I'd love to hear. We're going to scrub now the top of the hand in between the finger bones. We're just staying with that experience of nourishment. And now we're going to scrub between the fingers. We can be both rested and alert. We can be energized and relaxed at the same time. And in polyvagal theory, this is known as ventral vagal state. This is like the optimal state for humans. We're gonna scrub in between all those fingers and just kind of turn each finger gently before moving to the other side. So in polyvagal theory, it's like a ladder and there's three rungs on the ladder. We're going to move on to the other hand now. The bottom rung is dorsal, D-O-R-S-A-L, dorsal energy. You can think dorsal depression, dungeon, and it's truly associated with the nervous system state of freeze, 
play dead, roll over. That's our reptilian brain. That's our early, early evolution. And it makes sense that when we're confronted with a threat, a lot of us have this pattern. And we all know it. We're all familiar with it of rolling over and playing dead. And it's a state of freeze in the nervous system and in the fascia, which is the connective tissue that surrounds all of your organs, the hydraulic system that communicates seven times faster than your nervous system. And it's what I like love to geek out on. So we're gonna now get between the webbing of the fingers on that other hand. So that's dorsal, <laughs> that's like when you're really in that low shutdown place and it's so hard to reach for these tools dear ones i think it's like a miracle when we reach for these tools when we're in dorsal it's truly one of the biggest challenges of my life I scrub now into that palm the middle rung is um the sympathetic nervous system so this is truly the fight or flight um, wings of that autonomic nervous system, that tendency to run and to fight <laughs> when we're faced with a threat. And we all know what that's like too. Maybe you notice your pattern is more dorsal or more of the sympathetic energy. Ten, you know, what do you tend towards? It could be under-functioning or over-functioning. Um, and you could feel like a pretty good blend of both, which I often have. One of the most common things I see in my clients is that they think they're an overfunctioner, but their fascia and their nervous system truly is in dorsal, truly is like so frozen that that's their baseline, that when they have that experience of the arousal and the activation, they we almost get like some societal credit for it. Like, oh, who wouldn't want to be an overfunctioner? That sounds like a useful person. So I see people identifying that way a lot that actually like if you touch their fascia or if you like just look at their posture, you can tell they're in dorsal. Um, and so the top rung is ventral vagal and it's probably what you're experiencing right now if you've just practiced this delicious meditation with us if you're scrubbing your fascia with me right now if you're doing this nervous system work and it's this this top rung the, that's like where humanity is evolving towards hopefully where we're headed which is a state of relaxation that is energized so we're not hyper vigilant we feel safe in our bodies and in our environment. And it comes from the inside out, from a regulated environment internally, we then feel safe externally. And yet we're very alert and very connected. It's not from a place of hypervigilance, not from a place of survival, but from a place of thrival which is truly seeking social connection, seeking eye contact, seeking communication, seeking that creative play. Um, it's when humans are at their best. And so keep following along with me, keep practicing with me, keep joining Embodied Leadership on Mondays. This is what we're going to be doing for the next 10 weeks. We're going to be getting into a state of ventral vagal so that we can live our best lives, so that we can actually live out our purpose and serve from the overflow because too many women are, maybe they're shut down in their nervous system, but they're over-functioning externally because they've been conditioned into that. And so... Really, we want to get to a place of nervous system sovereignty so that we, not to like turn the dial in order to be the perfect person, in order to, to serve more or give more. That's not what we're after. And it's very subtle. We're after a state of optimal well-being because we're worthy, full stop. 
that's why we're doing this work. Okay. Like, let's not get it twisted. This isn't for added productivity boosts. This is because you're worthy. You are worthy of finding that path out of suffering, as the Buddha says. You are worthy of peak experiences. You are worthy of social connection and creativity and removing those blocks that get in the way. And then from there, if it feels good and it feels in line with your purpose to take up the mantle of leadership and from this state of pleasure and healing and rest, you then have things to share with the world and we all will benefit so much from this. So I hope you do. Then we can talk about your leadership. But this is like, for some people, this is going to be like triage to truly bring them to a, a healthy baseline. And we're cyclical beings. So sometimes we need the triage, no matter kind of where we're at on our leadership journey. But I really don't want us to get it twisted. This isn't to make us better leaders. The purpose is because we're worthy. And within the Nourish Leaders methodology, the first branch is nourishment, just because you're worthy. Healing your inner child, just because she deserves it. <laughs> and yeah, getting to experience life from a different baseline, from a healthier baseline, from a baseline of joy and pleasure and ease, right? And then from there, we start living like we're worthy, which to me truly is sovereignty, setting boundaries, communicating more clearly, being more in touch with our authentic self, because now we love our authentic self. We're like, oh, she's the bomb and she's super worthy and she's my best friend and my soulmate. So then we want to like not only preserve her, but be her in a more truly expressed way, which is that second piece of the Nourish Leaders Framework, which is sovereignty. And then the third piece of the Nourish Leaders Framework is this leadership. It's like, if you know you're worthy, if you live like you're worthy, then how can you lead like you're worthy? How do you lead in such a way that wakes the rest of the world up to their worthiness and to their sovereignty? That is like such love, the way I see it. That's how I love the world. And when I can connect my pleasure, my rest, my joy to this ripple effect of other women in the world or other people in the world feeling that that's possible for them, then it encourages me to keep on the path doing this work. So thank you for being here with me, dear ones. Sending you so much love for your week ahead. Let me know how it goes, and I'll see you next Monday. Bye.